Hey, I'm Gabriel, also known as Gabo the Guy. I'm passionate about traveling and taking people on amazing adventures. I'm on a journey to discover northern Portugal and experience the region's unique culture, gastronomy, and beautiful landscape. Let's visit Porto on the North. On this episode, I'm visiting some of the most iconic historic buildings and monuments in northern Portugal. I start at Porto's Cathedral. From there, I'll explore the old town towards St. Francis Church before visiting Porto's synagogue and the Jewish Museum. I'll leave Porto and head to the beautiful city of Amarante before making my way to Braga to check out Portugal's oldest cathedral. Afterwards, I'll continue to Viana do Castelo to visit the magnificent Santa Luzia Church. I end my journey in Ponte de Lima, a major pilgrimage reference in the Camino de Santiago. A traditional religious trip to northern Portugal couldn't be complete without a visit to the Cathedral of Porto, the Sé. The word Sé actually means the Sede Episcopalis, which means this is the official seat of the bishop. This cathedral is much more than a cathedral. It is the heart and soul of the city of Porto. The Sé is the most important Romanesque monument in the city of Porto and it is the place where it all began. Inside you'll find this beautiful Gothic cloister surrounded by typical Portuguese tile depicting biblical stories from the Song of Songs which according to tradition was written by King Solomon. In this room you'll find the most impressive artworks and frescoes telling the story of Jesus Christ's childhood. The construction of this medieval building started in the 12th century and it stands out in the city skyline. It's an important landmark in the formation of the city of Porto since it was built on a strategic location where you can have a 360 degree view of the surrounding horizon. At the time, this was crucial to protect the city from potential invaders. After all, the Christian reconquest of the Iberian Peninsula was taking place and defense was a constant concern. The rooftops of Porto as seen from the top of the cathedral. From the Sé, I'm heading to St. Francis Church, walking through the fascinating winding and narrow streets of Porto's historic city center. The Sé is the starting point to the Portuguese Camino de Santiago, the most important pilgrimage road in Europe. Around the historic center of Porto, you'll find the famous shell symbol that will show you the way. You can find traces of cultural and historic legacy all throughout the old town. The streets that go down from the Sea towards the river were also home to the old Jewish quarter. The Jewish community has always been an important part of the social, cultural and economic life of the city. A proof of that can be found in the location of the very first Jewish quarter in the Old Town. These streets are breathing history. It's a very cool place to visit while walking through the historic center. Pavet ad sanctarium meum ego dominus. The St. Francis Church is the most prominent Gothic monument in the city of Porto. But don't be mistaken by its modest facade. This place hides the greatest Baroque masterpiece in all of Europe. The amount of hard work and artistry that was invested in the design of this place 
really grants the traveler and the visitor here a transcending experience. The church stands as a trophy to the golden era of Portugal during the time of the discoveries. This place is truly a testament to the might of the Portuguese Empire. The Kadur Imaoz Chaim Synagogue is the biggest synagogue in the Iberian Peninsula and a fascinating monument in the city of Porto. The architecture of this building is marvelous and it is designed in a Moorish Portuguese traditional style with over 20,000 handmade tiles made right here in the heart of the city of Porto. Today, the Jewish community of Porto celebrates its holidays, festivities and Shabbat dinners right here at the synagogue and this holds the heart of the community where they preserve a millennia of religion, tradition and faith. Just across the street from the synagogue, you'll find the Jewish Museum of Porto. As you can see, the museum is brand new and it gives an elaborate perspective of Jewish life in the Iberian Peninsula. The museum takes you on a chronological journey through the story of the Jews since the beginning of time till the present day. In the museum, you'll also learn about the development of the city of Porto. For example, this reproduction of Porto in the 15th century at the night of the expulsion of the Jews. 1496. This is a replica of the oldest archaeological remnant found in the 14th century in Porto, telling the story of the inauguration of a Jewish synagogue in the city. The museum ends with a positive note with the return of Jews to the city of Porto in the 20th century, the revival of Jewish life, and the fascinating story of Captain Barosh Bashto. What a lovely morning here in Amarante. Just an hour away from Porto, I'm staying at this beautiful 16th century palace that used to host monks, pilgrims and travelers on their pilgrimage to this holy city. Today, this luxurious five-star hotel holds a Michelin star restaurant and some of the most amazing views to the city's monuments. So I'm here with Martinho, my new friend and uh, the tallest Portuguese I've met. <laughs> Martinho, as a history buff, what could you tell me about this bridge? Well, funny you should ask, Gabo. This bridge we're in right now is a ver very peculiar one. This, as you can see, is a very modern bridge. This, is, this dates from the early 1800s. It was rebuilt around that time because it was flooded and the older structure uh, that it was was totally destroyed. Around that time, the French Empire invaded Portugal and so there was a battle here that ensued for 14 days. This bridge leads us to the uh, main church in Amarante, the church of São Gonçalo, who was a monk that lived here in the 13th century. He was renowned for his miracle making as well as his matchmaking, his marriage making. So much so that there's even a tradition that remains that if a single young lady wants to find a match, a husband, or a fiancé, she needs, needs only touch the statue of Saint Gonzalo and the match will present itself uh, shortly. Saints and miracles are ingrained in Portuguese tradition and culture, so I leave the beautiful city of Amarante and dig deeper into the origins of the divine beliefs of this region. Braga is home to Portugal's first cathedral. As you can see, the Cathedral of Braga has different styles of architecture in it. The main aisle is definitely of the Romanesque approach, but the altar stands as a Gothic symbol. But if you look at the organ, 
it is definitely of the beautiful Baroque style. The cathedral has hosted a number of historical events throughout history and today there are great events that are televised throughout the nation but the main thing that happens here is during the Holy Week of Easter where this is the starting point of the processions of numbers of orders who go out to celebrate Easter. It is now clear to me that Braga was always the home of religions and traditions. Here I encountered a list of all the bishops of Braga since the first century AD with San Pedro de Rates till hopefully the end of time. The cathedral also exhibits artifacts related to the Portuguese history throughout the times. The Sanctuary of Good Jesus of the Mount was classified by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site in 2019. Visitors come to enjoy the lush gardens, the ornate sculptures that decorate the inspiring staircases, and the basilica. One of Portugal's first neoclassical constructions. It's a monumental site with a history that dates back to the 14th century. The Sanctuary of Our Lady of Sameiro is yet another example of the many magnificent churches we can find in Braga. Built in the 19th century, it's one of the most important Marian shrines in Portugal, only second to Fatima. Pope John Paul II visited this site in 1982. One hour drive towards Viana do Castello and I find myself on another imposing and quite original monument, the Sanctuary of Santa Luzia. The Church of Santa Luzia is unlike any of the church we've seen on this episode. It is only 80 years old and the style of this church is dedicated to the Byzantines who have spread Christianity around the world. One of the things that you can admire in this place are the beautiful tainted glass and the marvelous altar that strikes upon the view seen from the outside. Apparently, I cannot leave Viana do Castello without trying the Bonas do Natalio. I came to the heart of Viana, to this little plaza behind me, walked through the little streets, I saw a lot of cute stores and a lot of cool restaurants, and I just enjoyed this moment with my Bola do Natalio. Paso de Vitorino preserves the tradition of a noble family living in this house for the past 500 years. After going through several renovations throughout the centuries, they've reopened their gates four years ago for travelers to experience a journey to Portugal in the 18th century while enjoying the comfort of the luxurious stay. This manor house offers a great combination of classy decor and a peaceful countryside environment. I'm 
so excited to hike the Camino de Santiago tomorrow. But before I start my self-discovery journey, it's time to get some rest. Being a guest at Paso du Vitorino is a truly special experience. Everything here is designed with a cozy atmosphere in mind. You will definitely feel welcomed and enjoy the most authentic Mino hospitality. You will also have the chance to experience homemade Portuguese meals and even have a go at culinary workshops in this modern and spacious kitchen. Paso de Vitorino has a magical Baroque garden known as the Four Continents Garden. Let's explore. A mysterious and fascinating garden that reflects the history and essence of the palace. This is a place of peace, tranquility and comfort, where one finds an overwhelming quietness and a restorative feeling of well-being. The granitic stone contrasts beautifully with the green of the vegetation, and the whole scenery is smoothed by the freshness of the water coming out of the fountain and from the several ponds. A palace such as this one is a wonderful example of a Portuguese solar. A solar is a big house with sunny open spaces decorated with gardens, statues and water fountains. The title solar is only granted to the hand-picked houses that were privileged to accommodate the kings of Portugal. Paso do Vitorino is only a 10-minute drive away from Ponte de Lima, the oldest Portuguese town. The Roman bridge over the Lima River, after which the town was named, was built in the 1st century and since then it has been a fundamental passage used by pilgrims on their way to Santiago de Compostela. I'm meeting with Paulo Lopez, who is going to help me with all the information and logistics for my spiritual journey. Então, vou te entregar um roadbook com toda a informação detalhada do caminho e diariamente o que vai acontecer é que tu deixas de manhã as tuas bagagens uh, na recepção dos alojamentos e nós vamos transportá-las para o alojamento seguinte. The shell shows all roads end up in Santiago de Compostela. Although this being a pilgrim's road, it's actually a chance for people from around the world to get to know unique cultures go on self-discovery journeys and try different things. After getting a good night's rest and the right outfit, I'll be ready to complete my spiritual journey in northern Portugal. <laughs> 